Hey y'all, it's your main man E, and I'm coming to you today with the lovely Lula. Lula's here for a board and train, and we're working on her basic commands, as well as rehabilitating her from some of the stress she experienced before she was recently adopted. So let me take you through this little step-by-step -step on how we are going to teach down to this dog that does not know down. You'll notice I have this bed here. That's because I noticed this dog had a proclivity for going and laying down on its bed and it really enjoyed doing that. However, when I would get the dog onto concrete or wood chips or grass and I would hold the food and try to get the dog to go down or I would apply a little bit of leash guidance, the dog would always just seem extremely confused and look up at me like, I don't know what you're trying to get me to do, buddy. However, the dog would go and lay down on its own all the time. So what I did is I brought in the dog bed here. So we're gonna teach down on the dog bed and eventually we'll transition off of the dog bed onto just multiple surfaces. Uh, a raised bed or a training platform or just a very low distraction, smooth surface can be a great way to help your dog learn new commands or get better at their old commands if you find they get confused or they happen to be a little bit sloppy in those commands. Yes? Good. Yes. It's really important when you're teaching these new commands. Good. Yes. That you get a lot of repetitions in. You get a lot of chances for the dog to actively go to that command and practice putting themselves into that position. You can see I took the food out of my hand and that was moving a little too fast for her. Good. So right there, she was a little bit perplexed. Why is he holding his hand open and then he's closing it when I try to get the food? And this is where sometimes we have to strategize because the dog can become frustrated and not understand why is it that we can't just let them go like this, we're asking them to move their whole body into this position. Good. Break. Good. So notice I made those quick little kissing sounds that was to just kind of activate the dog and get the dog moving. Good. At this point, I would not name this command because I haven't seen her consistently putting herself into this command voluntarily without a lot of luring or a lot of coaching from me. Yes. Good. So there you can see she moved into the down position and I did not lure her. It's really important that we phase out the lure as soon as possible when it comes to just teaching basic pet obedience to our dogs. Good. If we're trying to add a high amount of enthusiasm or a lot of speed, yeah, the having the lure there can be very helpful to keep moving the dog into that position very quickly. In this case, I'm satisfied, this is just basic pet training. She's going there, she's very calm in her bed. That's really what we're aiming for. Yes, with her recall, I will try to get a lot more speed out of that command, but for this command primarily, we want the dog to be calm. Good. So you can see I still gave her a little bit of coaching by pointing at the bed. And at this point, I would probably name this, go to your bed, and then later I will name the down independently 
when I could start getting her to go to different beds and kind of associate going to different places and laying down, then I will isolate that and just say, hey, this is down and this is go to your bed. But for now, I think I'm actually gonna name this go to your bed. And then later on, I will call it down when we do it in a place that's not on her bed. Yes. So before I name a command, we wanna make sure that the dog is going to do the command. So I've seen her do this now a handful of times, pretty well and consistently. Go to your bed. She's going to do it. Good. It's really important that when we're first naming commands, we have that consistency and we have that 80 to 90% success rate. Oftentimes we're naming commands and very quickly the dog is not performing the command. So we find ourselves repeating the command or getting frustrated or saying no. However, we may need to go back and just name that command consistently when the dog is doing it properly, when we have something that's motivating the dog to do it before we add more distractions or phase out the food or use less valuable food or maybe have them do the command in a different context or a different area that they're not used to. Yes? Notice how much I am focused on just saying things one time. I said yes, she looked at me, I just held the food there in my hand and I let her come to the understanding, go to your bed. Good. That when he says yes, that means come out of the bed and come to him. Yes. She's still finishing her food here. Yes. So in that case, I am going to repeat the command because she was distracted when I said that marker word, she was distracted. So. Lula, go to your bed. So this is just what I was talking about earlier. I named it and she didn't go into the command. So no big deal. This just means we need to go back a step and we need to reintroduce the food lure. Good. Yes. And in this case, I'm not going to name it when I reintroduce the food lure because I want her to understand that this command happens without me luring her. Good. Yes. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, we don't blame them. We train them. If we love them, we lead them.